Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. In the Gospel tonight, we hear St. Mark continue to uh, explain to us what took place during those uh, first days of our Lord's uh, public uh, ministry. He was in that uh, synagogue, or he says that when Jesus left the synagogue, he went with his apostles to the house of a Simon Peter that was in Capernaum. If you happen to go to Galilee area, upon uh, you enter the town of Capernaum, it says Capernaum, the town of Jesus, then you will see a lot of um, excavation in the area. You can still see the temple where probably the temple most likely the temple that he went to in this gospel. You can still uh, see the temple, the columns still there. And when, uh, when uh, our group went there, we were sitting, where probably um, the people were sitting also when they listened to the scribes, priests, that time, their priest, and when the Lord was there also, probably people were on that place we were sitting also. And not far is the house of uh, St. Uh, Peter, where it's now a beautiful um, church, though I don't see the traditional church, it looks like different from other churches, it looks like a spaceship to me. <laughs> The bottom is glass, where you can see the house of St. Peter. Um, the church is like a second floor, and the first floor is the house of uh, St. Peter. And uh, not far is the Sea of Galilee. And this is um, the city when this gospel uh, happened. So he went to the house of St. Peter, he left the synagogue, and uh, with him was his apostles, the first to be called. And that Saturday, day of rest for the Jews, when he found out that the mother-in-law was uh, sick, she was strengthened by, or cured by the Lord. What strength that the Lord must have that just by taking her hand, He cured her. The healing was complete. That after the miracle, she began to serve, uh, to serve the Lord and the apostles. The news of this cure spread around the region area like wildfire. And a great crowd arrived at uh, St. Peter's house, and they brought with them many who were possessed by evil spirits and those who had different uh, physical illnesses. And the Lord cured many of them. The next day, early in the morning, he went to a deserted place to pray. Not far from Capernaum is where this house also where the multiplication of loaves and fish and loaves of bread, where you can still see the rolling hills where he most likely is seated as he eat. So this must be the place also that he went to, or probably not far is the Carmelite monastery where he the Beatitudes happened, the Sermon on uh, the Mountain of Mount Beatitudes. It's not far from that area also. So he went to a certain place to pray, and the apostles approached him and told him that many people were looking for him. Probably there were more people who came to have their friends and family members cured in their 
physical uh, illness. His plan was to go to another place or to a nearby town to preach also, not in that place only. And he said, this is the reason that I have come here. So the Lord had come with mission to spread the good news of sal salvation. His plan was to spread the word of God himself and that afterwards should be continued by his uh, followers, first by the apostles, the disciples, and us, by vir virtue of our own baptism. We are also priest, prophet, and king, so we have that responsibility to continue the ministry that he started, even not by words, not to stand in the corner and preach the gospel by having the Bible in your hand and preach to those who pass by, but by your actions, the way you deal with those that you encounter in this life, by your love and kindness, by your being honest, by helping those who are in need, they will see you as Catholic. We continue the mission that, that the Lord started. We as Christians, we all have that mission to evangelize as Christ uh, did, humbly, without seeking uh, fame or any personal gain. For in this uh, present society, even though it shows us on a daily basis that it seems like people are distancing themselves from God. In reality, the society really needs God, especially in these times of difficulty and persecution where a lot of people were suffering because they could not go to the church, inside the church. It's really different to be in your car, be in a parking lot, and hearing through an e EM station or whatever they are using. It's different from being inside and actively participate in the celebration. St. Paul, in his first letter to the Christian community of Corinth, counsels them about the importance of continuing the mission that the Lord started preaching. In this modern time, we do it through RCIA, through catechism, parents teaching their children, on so many things that we need to know. And it doesn't stop after catechism. We continue to learn by watching spiritual programming like EWTN, probably watching this beautiful TV series, uh, The Chosen, and also listening to a spiritual programming on radio or reading, or go to our Paris app where every day we have this uh, spiritual readings that I downloaded. So we are asked to uh, reflect on the importance of continuing education, attending seminars. We have a confirmation conference coming up for the children and they should uh, participate. I asked the uh, organizer why we have to pay for $15 for this online thing. And they said that uh, there are costs also that we have to pay for the speakers and other things. But um, uh, it's, 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 um, this is always like this. Um, there's always uh, money involved in anything, in anything 
everything that we do. And so it is a certain amount, $15, we asked our kids to go to this uh, conference. And then after they will attend the mass that will be presided by the bishop, still online. So let us follow what St. Paul told uh, to the Christians community of Corinth. And then when he speaks about himself, he says that he's, he does not preach for his own satisfaction, that his mission is to announce the gospel, the good news, the good news of salvation. And we have the same obligation that St. Paul had. And we can repeat to ourselves these words. Woe to me if I do not announce the gospel. Evangelizing can bring, always bring difficulties for all those who want to be closer to God. A lot of uh, RCIA or those who recently baptized or those who are coming back to the church, there's always difficulty. And sometimes it's our family itself that leads us away from this thing. We have so many questions. There are so many things that is in our mind. Questions that heart seems too hard to all answer. But these are all temptations. They will saying to us that what we have done is not enough or you are not doing the things that the Lord the Lord wants you to be the devil continues to accuse us even in our mind he will accuse us of not doing it right or not doing enough or not complying with what the Lord wants us to do but St. Paul says that even with these difficulties and troubles, we have to continue. We have to be faithful to him who is always faithful to us. You know, many of us, we know bishops, priests, deacons, and those who really want to follow Christ, pastors probably, who like the apostles give their testimony of their faith by complying with the teachings of Christ and they do not give up in the face of many difficulties they do what they are supposed to do but these are not doing anything special anything extraordinary for if we are just doing it because it's our responsibility or our duty, then we are not really doing more or giving extra mile to what the Lord asks us. It's just complying with the obligations that we all have as Christians. So we should not believe that this obligation ends when we leave the church after Mass, after Sunday Mass or daily Mass. The mission of evangelizing, evangelization should continue every day. That all these evil things that exist in our society, because a lot of us really are fearful or maybe ashamed of their faith. And so they stop giving testimony of the word and stop evangelizing but we should be very careful also when we do these things not just immediately this is what is it is supposed to be what i'm saying is for pastoral reason so that you will not show them away because the attitude especially the younger ones is when you start talking about god they don't like it and they will they might just live, you know, or they will not continue uh, with the conversation slowly, having in mind that this is my mission, that I'm going to carry or have the 
this young people or friends be with me and slowly take time takes time to convert the hearts of those who are away from God so continue the works of evangelization through our words and words and also to continue to ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten us that what we do is the right thing to do lovingly, kindly, pastorally to help those who are in need, those who are uh, those people that are hungry of the words of God. So in this Mass, let us ask the Lord to help us achieve our apostolate. All of us have this mission. We are all together in this mission. That we be firm and that we are courageous as St. Paul did. did. And so let us remember what he said. Woe to me if I do not announce the gospel. 